So I just got a new tool and I wanna show you it. But before I do that, a brief overview as to why it might be cool and why it might be useful in a shed like this. One technology that's really come a long way in the past few years in the home-based environment is 3D printing. 3D printing has changed the game in many aspects when it comes to working in your workshop, working on cars, doing nearly anything. If you have a 3D printer, you can pretty much create and build anything you like. You can use it for simple things like making brackets or making holders for things, or you can make prototyping as well too. Now, prototyping is particularly interesting to me because as many of you might know, I'm working on building a ITB powered 253, which is requiring me to make a custom manifold. So there's been a lot of prototyping involved. 3D printing has allowed me to do things like this, make a 3D printed sample of an ITB setup that already exists, but it was something that I was able to draw off plans and build this thing from mocking up purposes when it comes to trying to figure out how I'm gonna make this intake manifold work. Now the issue is I need to get this throttle body to work with an engine. And there's a bit in the middle that doesn't exist. How do I get this to talk to my engine if I don't know what my engine looks like in the CAD world? And that's where my new tool comes into play. This is a 3D scanner from Creality. Now you may know Creality from their 3D printers that have been around for a very long time and have done some awesome stuff in the 3D printing world, but they have also ventured into 3D scanning. Now this is a Raptor Pro and it's especially awesome because it has a lot of new features and does some really cool stuff, especially because of the accuracy that you get out of this. Thing. So in the box comes the hard case. So what do we got? So this is the scanner itself. It's really not all that big and it does some pretty impressive stuff. Probably gonna need to read through the manual on this thing. And then I believe beneath all of this, we have a calibrating table, which is important the first time you use it. Now all I need is my laptop and we can try this thing out. Does anyone else find peeling the protective films off brand new stuff really, really satisfying? That plugs into the computer. Yeah. So I've uh, this forward and just start doing it. All right, I think I've calibrated it. A little bit tricky to sort of get used to, but once you get used to it, you sort of get the hang of it and it shows you what you need to do, so it's not so bad. Now let's see what we can do with it. I don't have much experience when it comes to 3D scanners, so I'm gonna read straight from the book here because otherwise I'll get it wrong. The nerdy stuff, let's talk about that. The Raptor Pro has three different kinds of scanning modes. NIR or infrared scanner, which also does color. So it comes up so you can actually scan 3D models which actually have color like, like a photo basically. More for like your model making or something when you're trying to get an aesthetic look. So that's the first mode. Now the other two scanning modes, that's where this thing really comes into its own. It has a blue seven parallel line laser mode and a blue 22 crust laser line mode. And in either of those modes, it has an accuracy of 0.02 millimeters and it can scan things from anywhere from five millimeters all the way up to 4,000 millimeters. 420,000 points per second, whilst in the crust laser lined mode, it has a scan rate of 660,000 points per second. So what does that mean in layman's terms to someone like me? It's really, really accurate and you have two different modes. One's a bit faster than the other and one's a little bit more detailed than the other. We'll talk about more when we get to actually scanning a project, but a lot of 3D scanner guys would probably love in this thing that I do not understand. And that's okay, because I don't need to. All I need to do is make a picture in my computer. All right, so for the first scan I'm gonna try in this thing, I'm gonna try the NIR mode, which is like the infrared mode. Uses for that, I'm not really sure about in our world when it comes to building cars or anything like that, but if you want to use it for maybe product displays or something like that to generate something for a website, it could be very useful. I am going to use it or try it on this thing because it's got a lot of color in it and I want to see how it comes up and see what it does. So let's give it a crack and see what happens. So as you're using it, you're trying to get the right sort of distance away and you're trying to get in the green there. See how it's green? That's what we want to get. We want to get green, supposedly. Yep. Considering I'm a complete amateur at this, it actually seems to be picking it up quite well. And it tells you what I'm stuffing it up to, which is important. So we have done somewhat of a scan. We sort of brushed through it, so not completely finished. Now let's see what that looks like. It's looking pretty good. Considering I just sort of smashed through this pretty quickly, I didn't spend too much time on it. I'm actually impressed with what it's picked up so far. Ding. Holy crap. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. 
It looks like something out of a video game. Now you can see there's a few open cavities in this thing. That's just probably because I didn't spend enough time scanning that area, but you can see around the battery where I tried to focus on for a fair while there, it did really well. Now with the blacks, I'm told that it struggles to pick up blacks. It's just the nature of the technology. So you can see some of the black areas are vacant, but overall that's, that's pretty cool. I mean, that is that right there. How cool is that? Now it's on to the blue light laser because that's where this thing really shines. Don't mind the pun. That, was, that wasn't meant to be a pun, but we'll use it anyway. Now I mentioned before to you that, that one of the reasons why I'm so excited about this technology is because I'm utilizing it when it comes to building this ITB setup for a 253. ITB setups, obviously they have a throttle body, something like this, where there's gonna be a butterfly in this and there's gonna be injectors and they need to sit somewhere around about here. This is the whole idea of this project to make a cross ram ITB setup. Now the issue is I have this piece, I can buy this piece, I can buy the block, but the bit that connects these two items doesn't exist. I need to make that from scratch. So this bit right here needs to go. Now once you remove this standard manifold, you're left with this big giant valley right here and there's no way of connecting this to this directly to it. So this middle bit is the bit I need to design and create. Now the manifold itself that I'm creating obviously needs to hook up to two units. It needs to hook up to the ITBs, which is fine. I already have them in CAD because I drew them in CAD from a 2D drawing from the manufacturer. So I know my hole placements, I know my bore diameters. I know how I'm gonna hook this up. This already exists virtually. But the other section where the manifold needs to hook up to, the block itself, that doesn't exist in CAD. I need to get this block into CAD, get this information of where everything sits, where the ports are, where the holes are, what angle this is, what distance this is, the length of this, what is gonna hit, relationship between this and the rocker cover so they don't have any clearance issues when I actually make that manifold. There's a lot to consider. Now, I could do all that by rulers and verniers and angle finders and all that and get a basic idea of it, but it will never be accurate. So instead, what I did a couple of weeks ago is I went down to a good mate of mine's, Richard from Designer Built, and we actually scanned this entire block using the same 3D scanner that we are talking about today, all this value right here to get all that information. Once we then had that data scanned, we were able then to use that data or export it and put it into a program like SolidWorks where we can start to actually build the model from the scan data. So this is the scan data as it comes in from raw form. Now this information as you see it is not smart information in the sense that you can't build directly off it. Think of it more as a template or a guide in which you use to build a model below it or a smart model which you can model stuff off. So I've done that as well too. Over the space of a couple of days, I was able to do that by drawing basically below the model itself. And that looks something like this. Basically you draw in all your features and stuff so then you can actually work to this and then from this that means that I can actually start designing my intake manifold to get the ITBs to talk to the block that's essentially all the intake manifold is we'll talk more in depth on this obviously when we get to the 253 episode which hopefully won't be too far away if I get a few more things sorted I'll have an update for you all but yes there's plenty going on and this thing was an absolute lifesaver when it came to getting the information that I needed from the block and getting it into CAD. But anyway let's see how it's done using the blue light lasers. We'll start with the seven parallel lasers to begin with. Uh, that is for more intricate and more detailed work and smaller items and the something that I need to scan in because I need to know what these look like is a standard thermostat housing for a HQ Holden. We'll scan this then I can use this on my CAD drawing eventually to figure out where that goes, what that's gonna look like and how I get my ITBs to go around it. Okay, so unlike the infrared scan, uh, there's a little bit more work involved when it comes to doing the blue light laser scan. By a little bit of work, I mean, it's not a huge deal, but all you need to do is get these reflective strips that you find that they provide to you in the kit. They look like this, they're just little white dots, small ones, big ones. And you just gotta chuck a few around on the surface that you're scanning basically. And all they are used for is just a reference for the scanner to figure out what it's doing, what it's looking at, where it's at in relation to its geometry. The more of these you can put on, the better I'm told. So we will load up. All right, so I have put all the markers on. Now we're gonna try and scan it. I've just sat it on a piece of steel so I get it off the ground to make this a bit easier, but we'll see how we go. So bear in mind this is the first time I've ever used this tool, so let's just see how we go, shall we? All right, look at that. 
So you can see where I've missed, or I think I may have actually deleted some of that. But that is our thermostat housing. Not bad, huh? The detail in it though is pretty phenomenal. So you can see here from the data that we scanned from the engine block, I was able to make this an intake manifold, basically bottom plate as a starter to figure out where I'm gonna get my runners and everything to work on. That's a whole nother episode. We'll go into that more when we are working on the 53 build. But one thing that I have been working on is I've been working on this, the lower thermostat housing, which would go, which needs to be there for the intake manifold itself. Now you can see here, I've sort of got it mapped out how I think it's gonna look. So what I was able to do was bring in the scan data which we got from scanning this. I was able to make the base of this and what it's gonna look like by using this as a reference. So you can see there, that's sort of what it looks like and this will just give me an idea of what I need to work around. It'll give me constraints, it'll give me any clashing issues when it comes to making my runners. Is this gonna contact anything and do I need to change my design slightly to be able to use standard parts like this. You can see already just how quickly and easy being able to scan something like that, put it into your drawing and then do your, all your drawings around it. The time saving ability of that and not to mention the accuracy is just huge, absolutely huge. So I'm really stoked with it. You can see right there. I mean, how good does that look? So yes, this process of 3D design can be done the old fashioned way with analog by measuring everything out and getting out your rules and your protractors, doing it all manually and then trying to build something from a 2D sketch. But you see this part right here, look how complicated that is. Can you imagine trying to draw that two spec, two size, to the exact measurements of this? It would be a nightmare. We were able to do that using our 3D scanner in a matter of minutes, get it uploaded, get it into the CAD program and design around it. And now I can have this in CAD forever and design everything from the computer without even having to get a ruler out. Now that is small scale stuff. Now I wanna look at something bigger. And by bigger, I mean, I wanna see whether I can scan the floor of this Tirana here in this sort of area here, just behind the transmission, because one of the things that we need to do in the future of this thing is build a cross member that goes from these chassis strengthening kits that we put in a couple of weeks ago to join the two together. And at the same time, what I want to do is get it to incorporate a tail shaft loop so that it's all one piece and it's all one unit. And I want to do it out of plate steel, just like this cross member that you can see here. So I want to scan this floor. I want to scan this arch because that's important to me because I need to know how far up I can go with this tail shaft loop and follow the floor as close as I can because that tail shaft that we put in this thing is going to be pretty big and there's not going to be a lot of room between that and the floor it is. So we need to try and make sure that we're as close to the floor as possible. And the best way to do that is scan it, get the data in CAD and then build my design around that information. So I know that it's going to fit to that exact floor. For this scan, because it's a much larger scan, I'm gonna be using the 22 line crosshead pattern rather than parallel. The 22 crosshead works quicker and I think also allows you to scan a much bigger area because it doesn't have as much detail, but that's okay. I don't need a great amount of detail for what I'm trying to achieve here. So one thing to note when it comes to using these 3D scanners or any 3D scanners is they don't like black surfaces, especially black shiny surfaces like this beautiful cross member here. The scanner can't pick it up because black absorbs light, which means that they have trouble reading it and getting the information. So uh, what you can do is you can buy a spray, which you can spray onto all this sort of stuff. And basically it means that you can scan these things, but I don't have any yet. I've ordered some. So in the meantime, all I'm gonna do is just cover this paint up with a bit of tape so that I can at least scan this in. Alright, so that's pretty much my scan done. You can see I've got everything that I want I got have. I have it across the arch where I'm where it's important to me, so We'll stop that, let that process, and then we should have our scan floor. That looks freaking awesome. I mean, it doesn't get much cooler than that. I'm really, really happy with that. That's my completed floor, so let's save that now. Let's process it. We'll let that go for a little while, and then I can throw that in a CAD, and I can start drawing up some form of a tail shaft loop slash cross-membered 
joined together a thingy. And then I'm going to send it to a laser cutter, get it all laser cut in the shape and pieces that I need to bring it back here, weld her up and throw her in. Just like I bought one. I bought one, like, like it was custom made for this car, because it was. Because it was scanned off the car itself. That's what makes this thing so cool. So as you can see from that scan data that I took from the bottom of the Tirana then, I was able to build a cross member slash tail shaft loop and I was able to build it all in CAD, all virtually, without even picking up a tool. Now I can send that off to a laser cutter, then I can get all my pieces like an Ikea flat pack, weld it all together and throw it into this car. And by rights, it should bolt straight up. Remember, the accuracy of this scanner is 0.02 of a mil. In context, about the width of a human hair. I gotta say, I'm really impressed with this bit of kit. Like I said, I've had a little bit of experience using it before when we scanned the 253 block with Richard, but being able to get it here in the shed and use it myself and actually get to learn it a little bit more in depth, I'm actually really, really impressed with just how powerful this thing is. A big thank you to Creality for sending me out this Raptor Pro. I really do appreciate it. This is something that I have wanted for a really, really long time. Now, I geek out on this because I have a CAD background. For those of you that don't know, many, many moons ago, over 10 years ago now, I used to be a draftsman. Drawing stuff up on the computer is something that is very familiar to me and it's something that I've used a lot when it comes to not only projects in the workshop, but home renovations, setting out the shed itself. For me, CAD and 3D CAD has been a really, really useful tool in many, many ways. But one thing that I have always wanted is I've always wanted the ability to get the real world and put it into the virtual world by use of a 3D scanner. The technology has finally landed where you can do that at home at a reasonable cost as well too. These things, although they are not a particularly cheap tool, they are also not considered an overly expensive tool for what they are. The timing of this could not have been more perfect. I have so many uses for this tool, it's not even funny. So you will definitely see a lot more of it in the channel in the future. Anyways, I hope you guys have liked this. It's something a little bit different for us, doing a little bit of a tool review, but I just thought it's such a cool tool that I just wanted to share with you guys and run you guys through the possibilities and why you might want to get one for yourselves at home or for your business. And if you like this sort of stuff, these sort of tool reviews, maybe we'll do more in the future. I don't know, let me know in the comments below. But uh, until we get another tool, I guess, I'll see you in the next episode.